my name is Christina, staff member here at Creative Art Studio and Wheel Instructor. Today I'll be taking you through the process of making a bowl on the pottery wheel, which you can learn with us in either our six week recurring classes or our one hour semi private classes. The first thing we're going to do together is wedge our clay and then we're going to bring it back to our wheel. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do here is cut our piece of clay off of this block. So I just roll my bag down here and I use this long wire tool to cut the clay. So I'm going to start in the back and move towards myself here. Now I have a nice wedge of clay that I can use to make balls of clay that we put on the wheel to make our bowls. So I'm just going to set this up on its side and then cut it into a few more pieces here. And now we have the clump of clay that we're going to use for our bowl. To push this aside, we're then going to use this table to wedge our clay. And this table is made of cement board similar to drywall and what it does is wick moisture from our clay but it also allows us to take our clay and blend it into each other to make sure that all of the moisture levels are even throughout our clay and there's no additional air bubbles in there that could cause problems for us later. So I'm going to set my clay down on our, um, on our board right here and I'm just going to start kneading it kind of like dough. And as you can see here this board is starting to wick a little bit of our moisture out of this clay. But as we turn it and knead it like this, what we're doing is squeezing all that air out the side as we turn. And then we're just going to hit our clay into a ball. And now it's ready to go on the pottery wheel. All right, so now that we have our ball of clay fresh off of our wedging table, we moved on over back to our pottery wheel here, and this is where the magic happens. So I have a pedal to my right that I can use kind of like a sewing machine pedal. I also have a tabletop in front of me that I can use to hold my water, my sponge, and any tools we may be using throughout the process. The first thing I'm going to do is take my clay, give a little toss, totally necessary here, and smack it right down in the middle of my wheel. I want to make sure that my clay is to secure to the bat as it can be. So once I turn my wheel on here, I'm going to add some water to my clay and my hands. We want to make sure there's a nice layer of water between our clay and our hands anytime we go to touch it. And I'm just going to make a little dome with my hands and push downward to secure that clay to the bat just a little bit better. What this does is give me a nice seal so that when I'm doing this next step called coning, I can cone up and down without worrying about the clay popping off into my hands. So I'm going to add a little bit more water here to both the clay and my hands and I'm going to start the process of centering. So centering is where we use um, a technique called coning up and down to make sure that clay is perfectly in the middle of our wheel. I'm going to take my hands against the bat here, start at the bottom and kind of roll that pressure up to the top to make a cone. Then I'm going to cone down by putting my left hand on the outside and pressing my right hand downward and out as that clay pushes down into the bat. So this is a centered piece of clay and just for the sake of security we're going to go up and down one more time. So again I'm going to go down at the base, rotate that clay up just a little bit and I'm going to take that same position and rotate it down. I'm going to take off that extra clay there, add a little bit of water. And now we have a nice centered piece of clay. This is a process that we learn in our six week class um, from taking that raw clay off the block and putting it on our wheel nice and centered. If you join us for one of our one hour semi private classes, we're going to have taken care of this step for you. So you'll come in here and you'll have a nice centered piece of clay on your wheel ready to go for you to get thrown. So now that our clay is centered on our wheel, we're going to move to our next step, which is called dropping the center. Basically what we're going to do is take our hands and we're going to put a hole in the middle of the piece as it's spinning on the wheel. And what this does is give us a nice space to open up those walls to pull them taller later. So we're going to use our hands in a butterfly position here. My thumbs are together, my wings are out to the side. I'm going to add some water. So my wings are just going to kind of hug that clay out here on the side and my thumbs are going to start to push down into the middle. Once I have this little indent here, we're going to turn that into a hot tub. Just add a little bit extra water that can um, give us enough moisture to push down the rest of the way without our hands getting sticky. So I've left about a third to a half inch um, 
of clay left at the bottom so that our bowl has a base to it. We don't want to make a donut right off the bat. We want to make sure we have a nice piece of clay at the bottom that will support our bowl. Once we're open, I added a little bit extra water and now we're just going to make this wider. So instead of pushing down with my thumbs, I'm pushing out into my hands to make a little bit wider of a, of a um, center here. I'm going to take my sponge, just compress that to flat. Okay, a little bit of hug. And this is what I call setup for success. So our clay is widest at the base here. We have a nice angle on the outside and we have an angle on the inside that matches that of the out. So our walls are pretty nice and even right now. So when we go to pull them, we won't have too much trouble getting that clay up from the bottom. All right, I'm just adding water to those walls there. And before we move on to the next step, we wanna make sure our wheel takes its speed down a notch and we're at about half speed. Now that it's time to pull our walls, we just want to make sure that we're keeping our hands in good position against the wheel. And we're always going to be over here at about 4 or 5 o'clock. My hand position, instead of that butterfly I was using before, is now going to turn itself over into an alligator with my thumbs crossed. My left hand is going to be on the inside just to support that wall, and my right hand is going to be on the outside grabbing that clay from the bottom and moving it up. My thumbs are locked so that my fingers know where each other are on either side of the clay. I start on the inside here and my right hand is just moving up and both of my hands are moving up the piece of clay together until I get to the top. And I'm going to very slowly and gently come off. I'm going to compress my rim there, add a little bit more water to those walls. I make a little indent for myself at the bottom here so my right hand has something to grab. And then we're going to do that one more time. All right, compress my rim, add an indent, and I think I can get one more pull out of this one. All right, now we're just going to want to clean up our little cylinder we have here so that we can turn this nice straight cylinder out into a bowl. And I'm just going to clean this up before we kind of shape it into the bowl we like. So I take this tool, this is called a wooden knife, and I just get a little bit of that extra clay off the bottom there. We don't need too much clay down there. I'm just cleaning it up. I also want to use this tool. It's a metal rib, and I'm just going to hold it on the side out here. And what I'm doing is scraping off any of that yucky wet clay that we don't need on the outside. So what I'm left with here is a nice strong wall that we can turn out into something a bit wider. To change the shape of our bowl, we're going to use different forms of pressure. So I'm taking this sponge, it's pretty dry, there's no water in it. I'm going to put pressure on the piece towards myself and slowly move it up. And what I'm doing is just giving this clay steady, even pressure to push it out, not too fast. With every bit of pressure, I, I'm um, focused on making that shape that I'm looking for. All right, once I'm happy with the shape of my bowl, I'm just going to clean up the inside with my sponge, clean up the outside, compress my rim, and we're all set to move on to the next step. All right, so I went ahead and grabbed us some glazes, and what these are is actually underglaze. And it's a cool formula where it's pretty similar to our raw clay here. And we can go ahead and apply that color and it'll dry and act like our clay through the next few processes. All right, so I have my paints on my palette here and I'm ready to get started glazing my bowl. I'm gonna turn my wheel to the slowest speed we've seen yet, right about here. I'm gonna make sure that my paintbrush has a good amount of glaze on it. And then I'm just gonna hold it steady at the base here so that as the wheel's spinning, that glazes applying nice and evenly to our piece. Once I start to feel my brush get a little sticky towards the clay, I know it's time to go get more paint. All right, now I'm gonna switch colors here. Just kind of holding my brush nice and steady and letting the wheel do the work for me. I'm not doing any crazy brush strokes or anything like that. I'm just letting the wheel as it spins work to my advantage. Now that I have the glaze applied to the outside, I'm just gonna give mine one nice little swirl on the way up to blend those color changes. 
All right, and I'm ready to glaze the inside. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just holding my brush nice and steady, and as the wheel spins, the glaze is evening out on my piece on the inside. This is where you really have a lot of opportunity and creativity to make your bowl. However you choose, um, you can use anywhere from one to four or five colors and blend them however you like. Whether you have one color on the outside, multiple colors on the inside, whatever your vision is for your bowl is now where it can come to life. Blending those colors on the way up and I'm all set. So now that I have my piece glazed, I stop the wheel just to admire how it looks, make sure I like it, and I'm ready to go. If you're in one of our one hour uh, private classes, once you get to this point, this is where you're gonna leave it, and our CAS staff is gonna take care of it the rest of the way. All right, so we're back, it's the next day. It's been a good 24 hours, and now we're ready to take our bowl, um, which is a little bit harder to the touch. It's not bending when I put my hands on it, and we're ready to trim the bottom. On our wheel head here that we were using before, we just have a nice little grip system we can use to make this a little bit easier. So I'm gonna turn my piece over on this. I'm just gonna start to turn it to tighten that system. And once my piece isn't really moving around anymore, I know it's tight enough to get started. So I'm gonna use this tool here to trim the piece. So the goal is to just trim a little bit of this extra clay off the edge, as well as even out that top part of the bowl here. I'm gonna use my pedal again to my right to turn my wheel on, use my left hand to give a little bit of support, and use my right hand to start trimming that extra clay off. We can see all those nice little clay ribbons coming off now. So once I have this edge trimmed up how I'd like, and I'm gonna to pivot to tr trimming up this top part here. Not too much to come off, we just wanna give it a nice little even bottom. This is something we do for our semi-private one hour classes um, the day after you guys come here. So we're gonna turn them over the next day, give them a nice trim. Once we're happy with the edge as well as the top surface, we just go ahead and put a nice little Creative Art Studio stamp on the bottom. as well as a stamp that says the date that this piece was made, which would be yesterday. All right, last but not least, I'm just gonna use this paint bottle here to put my name on the piece. All right, so now that we have our piece trimmed, I just wanted to show you a couple extra examples of pieces that I've made using this same process here. Once this bowl is through the system, it'll look a lot more like this one. 